Hi, I'm David Preston, and today on Cook Like a Bastard, we'll be making empanadas. Yes, that's right. Little South American pies. And the cool thing about them and what makes them so bastard-like is that you put pretty much anything you want in them, and they're going to be good. Not just good, damn good. Here on Cook Like a Bastard. Everywhere you go through South America and Latin America, you're going to find different types of empanadas. The ones you find in Chile are going to be different than the ones you find in Ecuador. And the ones you find in the Bastard's Kitchen is going to be different than any of them. This is the cool thing about these. Because once you make the dough, you can stuff them with pretty much anything and they're going to be real good. We're going to start with the dough and the dough is really simple. I start with just um, three cups of flour here and a, a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to mix this up. Um, and then my wet ingredients are e even simpler. I got um, two eggs. Actually, it's not really two eggs, is it? Because it's one egg and one egg white. We'll just quickly separate this. There you go. Uh, and then a little water, about um, half a cup of water, three quarters of a cup of water. A little vinegar. And then we're going to mix this up. Then I'm going to take three tablespoons of um, shortening to put into the flour. And I'm just going to cut this up with a potato masher because I don't have a pastry blender, but this thing is going to work. Just kind of to, to cut this into here a little bit. And break up the shortening. So once you cut the, that in, the shortening in, you make a little hole in the middle. Pour in your wet ingredients. And mix that up with a fork or a spoon. So the consistency starts to build and everything moistens up. And then you get to knead it a little bit. So I'm going to put a little bit of a flour on the countertop here. It seems like such a waste and we went through so much work to clean it, but I guess it's part of the process. I'm going to take my dough here. And right now you see the dough is kind of flaky and separate. We're going to knead it and put it together and work it a little bit. You don't need to work it a lot, but kind of get a good consistency between all of it. Remember, you can find all of our shows on cooklikeabastard.com. Again, you don't want to work the dough too much because you only want a nice flaky crust when you're done. But just make sure that it's worked and well mixed. So continue to knead the dough until you have really a nice consistency. You don't need to over knead it. And then when you're done with this, you're going to take this and um, wrap it in plastic and put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour and not more than a day. But it's, you can make this ahead of time. And while you're letting this sit, it would be a good time to decide what you're going to put into it. As I said, one thing I really like about the empanadas and what that makes them so bastard-like is that you can take anything you have around the kitchen, put it together, and put them in these great pastry cells, and you're going to have a great little meal. We're going to start out with making something that you may remember back from our last show. This is some of the leftover beef and pork that was really nicely seasoned from the hot dog show. Now, we had a lot of spice in here, which you can see right here. Coriander, marjoram, paprika, cayenne, crushed red pepper, mustard, mace, garlic, onion, white pepper, sugar, and two egg whites. Now, doesn't that sound like an empanada, doesn't it? So I'm going to start out by just um, browning this beef in pork. Okay. 
in kind of a medium heat. You might want to let a, just a little bit of oil into the meat. And while this is browning, I'm going to be cutting up some of the other ingredients we're going to be putting in this. And it's going to be pretty simple because it is well spiced already. I got two tomatillos because that's what I had around. And they seemed like a good thing to put in there. So I'm going to di quickly dice these up. Pop those in. It's going to add a little moisture to the meat. Because you don't want your empanadas to be completely dry on the inside. I'm going to take some onions. And you can put the onion in now or you can put it in before the meat. Just make sure that it does um, have enough time to, to cook. I'm going to take the, the onions, put them in here. Oh, I can smell the mace. You remember how excited we were when we put the mace in the meat before? And why not put a jalapeno in there? Quickly slice this up. Leave the seeds in so you have the heat you want. And remember, you might have an urge to salt and pepper this at this time, but remember all the spices we put in when we originally mixed up the meat. Now I've taken the liberty to um, take a couple of potatoes and boil those up and we're going to dice those. You don't want to boil the potatoes ahead of time. And these are golden potatoes. You can use sweet potatoes if you have those wrong. You'll find out we actually did have some wrong when we get later in the recipe. But I wanted more of a traditional potato. Chop things up because kind of a violent activity, the chopping thing. So we're going to put these in here, a couple more, about one ramekin of corn, mix the corn in, hmm, I think it's missing a little something. Ginger ale. I think it needs a little ginger ale added to it. I'm going to pour some ginger ale in here and let that simmer in. And this is all, it's going to cook for a little bit and that'll be ready to be stuffed. Another great filling for your empanadas is something that's sweet potato based or yam based. I took a couple yams here and I baked them at, at 375 degrees for about 40 minutes and then these are nice and done. Put these in here. And then you just take your mash, potato masher and mash these guys up a little bit. And that's pretty simple. So let's, let's bastardize it a little bit. Let's take some black beans. It's about a can. I'm going to put almost a, a th two thirds of a can of black beans in here. I'm going to take some brown sugar. Because what we want to be doing with our flavors here, we have a competition between the sweet and the spicy. So I'm going to take a little chili powder, a little cayenne. Remember, this is going to make the spiciest. some cinnamon and just a hint of cream of tartar. How come? Because we like it. And then we finish it up with mixing this up just a little, little bit.
I'll just put in a little sweetened condensed milk, about half a can, for the size of the recipe we're doing. We're probably not making a full recipe here because we have so many different empanadas we want to make. Turn my burner on here because I'm going to just warm this up a little bit before we stuff them. Probably just add a little pepper. A little salt. Mix it in here to warm up. And you got some sweet potato empanada filling. Perhaps one of the more traditional uh, empanada fillings are chicken. So I'm going to put some things together and see how traditional we can get here in the Bastard Studios. So I'm going to start with about a cup, cup and a half of, of chicken stock in a warm pan. And I have my chicken thigh, which I already cut up. These were boneless, very easy to deal with. Let's put these in the pan. You're kind of you know, blanching these when you're in here. And then let's think about what ingredients we had. I pulled a bunch of things together, you know, a few cloves of bar garlic. Boom, boom, I love doing this. Boom, boom. Man, so easy, so easy. And funnily satisfying at the same time. So we're gonna put this in here. We're gonna take an onion, chop that guy up here. See if we can not make the bastard cry again. Not that I'm a bastard, we've made that clear, but sometimes, I get a little weepy. I do get a little weepy when we're um, doing the onions. And it's not because of the chemicals in there, it's just because I'm so excited about the products we're making for you, the people. All right, let's take these onions and put them in here. Hey, I found a habanero, why not put that in there? Boom, slice in half, slice in half, boom, and dice her up. Remember, small is probably good with a habanero. Habanero hot. Oh, those onions. Those onions. I'm so happy I'm making this food for you. There are many techniques to make the onions not make you cry. But I'm just the emotional type. And you can take that to the bank. All right. Putting in the habaneros. I'll take a couple um, green onions. Move my junk out of the way, if you know what I mean. All right. Chop up the end. Dice, 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 dice. Want to do it again? Sure. Dice, 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 dice. A couple more dices that time. Pop these guys in here. Take a little cilantro. Who doesn't love cilantro? 25% of the population hates cilantro. I happen to be part of that that loves it. So I'm going to chop these guys up here. This is so easy again. See, we're not following any real um, order to how we're doing things here. We've just kind of taken a collection of stuff that we have laying around and putting it together. Mix these guys in here a little bit. Oh, that's really pretty. And it's already, already bringing my desire to have a little smell of vision here in this show. What else should we put in here? Hard boiled egg, why not? Let the record show that this is the first hard boiled egg used in any of the Bastard series. Get a little space here. See, when you go here, when you're making your, having your enchiladas, you're going, hmm, what should I eat first? Was it the chicken or the egg? It might be at the same time. That's perplexing how that occurs. these guys in here. A few black beans left around. Why wouldn't those go in there? Got a poblano pepper. And this was laying around and I said, there's no poblano with this poblano if I use it today. A couple more days, it may have been a poblano. Now again, when you're thinking about the peppers, you're thinking about the heat you're using. A poblano isn't as hot as the as the jalapeno or some of the other peppers we use. So you can be a little more free with it. It adds color, it adds flavor. Wow, 
Just take a look at how pretty that is. All right, now let's add a little spice to this. Let's start with a little cumin. A little paprika. Put a little more paprika than cumin. Cayenne. So those of you worried about the heat, this is how you're gauging how hot this is going to be. I'd say that's about a tablespoon there. A little um, chili powder. And we're going to mix these in. I know I already talked about the smell of vision, but if you at home or wherever you're watching on your mobile device via cooklikebastard.com, perhaps, um, you would be surprised at how, how good this smells. Put a little bit of salt. Pepper. Mix this in. Now I'm going to do a couple more things. I'm going to add some oil, vegetable oil. Not much, maybe a quarter cup or so. And then maybe that little something that you might have been thinking of. A little bit of cottage cheese. Yeah. I don't know. I had some cottage cheese. I thought it might be what you need. You often have some type of cheese in your empanadas, and this might be one to use. So we mix this all together here, and we're going to turn the heat down and cook, cook the moisture and flavor into this. And we'll be right back. So we let our dough sit for about an hour in the refrigerator, unwrapping it. Now you got a choice to make here. You can um, do these two ways. Well, there's probably about 200 ways. But let's say there's two ways that you can do them. You can either make little balls and then roll them out, or roll the whole thing out and then cut your empanadas out of that. I only choose route two. I think they're easier to um, put together if they're rounder, and it's easier to make them round if you cut round holes. So I'm just going to use my little French rolling pin here. Put a little flour on here and on my counter. Just roll her out. All right, so you roll it out until you think it's thin enough. You're going to be able to cut about 10 empanadas out of here, and they're about a five, five inch circle or so. Now I don't have the perfect cutter for this, so what can I use? So thinking around, the top from my um, pitcher is going to work here. So I'm going to cut out 10 holes, or as many as I seem to be able to make. Then we get to mix it again. Oh, this is working, this is actually empanada size. That worked pretty well. So you want this size, which is probably about four or five inches across. You can make them a little bit bigger, probably not any smaller than this. Take this off and just leave them off on the side here. And then what you'll do next is you'll just take the dough roll out again and cut out a few more. So you may think that this is a well-rehearsed process. No, we have never made empanadas here. And that's why we, we like doing stuff like this in the Bastard Studio. Kind of really experimenting with things we see out in the world. We kind of like and say, hmm, I wonder how you can make that. That's very bastard-like. You know, when I think it's bastard-like, I've got to make something clear. I'm not a bastard. I cook like a bastard. You know, the show is not cook bastard. No, it's cook like a bastard. So thought we might get that clear. So you're probably going to want some kind of sauce to use on your empanada. And if you've tasted the, the moisture that was in with the chicken, you're going to want to say, how can I get more of that? Well, we're going to make our dipping sauce out of that. So we've taken a little bit of the moisture from the chicken, and we add just a little bit of cornstarch in here to thicken it up just a little bit. And this was so tasty. I mean, it was just like, wow, those spices came together so well. You wouldn't believe we were just kind of doing this on the sly, would you? Anyhow, this would be a great little dipping sauce for you. Well, this is where the empas become the empanadas. That's right, we're going to do the stuffing right now. So we have our pastry here, we have all our filling, and this is where the fun, where the of the project happens to come out. Now, you could um, fold these over and just use a fork to seal them, but no, we're not going to do that. We're going to use more of a braided rope technique. So this ought to be fun because I haven't really 
practice this. So um, we're going to start with the sweet potato. So I'm going to take a spoonful of the sweet potato and um, place it in the middle of my pastry here. I'm going to take my, my brush and take a little bit of the egg um, that I have here. I have um, some, just some scrambled egg. Just put this around the outside to help it seal. Fold it over and do a preliminary pinch. And then we do the little fancy roping thing. And this is pretty easy. Just pull your finger, thumb, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb, finger. And there you go. You got your little empanada. So the chicken one might be a little trickier because the mixture is a little moister. So I'm going to put my egg on the outside right away. You put it before or after you put the chicken in. Try to drain off some of the moisture. Fill it. Don't get it too full because it will never seal on you. Take it in the middle, pinch, 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 pinch. So you pinch it so it's starting to go together. And then you can, can work your art if you want. A little thumb and the finger pinch. Well, end up being nice and um, nice and whole if the, if the roping technique doesn't work. So I'm going to take a little more of the beef mixture again. Still you use a little bit of the egg. Fold it over. And then you can just use a fork to go around the edge. So this is another way. It might be easier, less traditional, but if you're if it's your first time doing it, you know, it might be a good way to do it. Another thing you need to worry about with the dough, you don't need to make your own dough. You can buy pastry dough. Some people use wonton. Some people use crescent rolls that they, they roll out. We're going to um, coat these with a little egg. We're going to put these in the oven for about 20-25 minutes until they become golden brown and golden delicious. Here and cook like a bastard. Well, here you go. We have some of our empanadas here. And I got to tell you, I think this was really a classic bastard um, meal here. Where we really just threw a lot of things we had in the kitchen together to put in these very easy pastry shells to make. And now the key is to actually taste it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I've never made empanadas before. I had no idea what to do. We put them together, we had an idea, and we made a delicious taste treat here. Here on Cook Like a Bastard. He cooks like a bastard. So can you. He's not a bastard. Today. A bit of chicken stock and just put it in my heated pan here. And I got about four or five chopped up. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how'd that work out for us? David.